Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you for holding this very important hearing. And I do also want to, well, I don't uh, agree with uh, Mrs. Rogers in terms of what she said uh, about the Trump administration leading on this issue. I don't think they are. Uh, but I do want to thank you for being, um, for pointing out that there's a lot more that the private sector could do. And also for coming down very hard on China, because I think you're absolutely right that there's so much of this that's coming from China and that they're very much to blame for a lot of the counterfeiting and, and outright fraud that we're seeing. But I want to uh, say that thanks to the growth in e-commerce, we can purchase products from our computers, phones, tablets, or our smart speakers at any hour of the day with the expectation that the products will be delivered, will be delivered at our doorstep within days or even hours. Uh, third party sellers on online marketplaces such as Amazon, eBay, and others are responsible for, for much of the convenience providing a seemingly, seemingly endless selection of products for consumers. On Amazon, where nearly half of online U.S. shoppers start their product searches, sales by third-party sellers now make up 60% of total sales. But the problem is that this convenience has come at a price, and that is a proliferation of dangerous counterfeit goods that endanger consumers and property, and an army of counterfeit merchants from overseas, particularly China, that undermine American small businesses with unscrupulous tactics. And the practices and policies of the online platforms have made it increasingly difficult for even the savviest consumers to avoid fake and unsafe products. For years, brick and mortar stores have had policies in place to ensure the integrity of their supply chain. The stores also take responsibility for defective or unsafe products. And these traditional practices simply do not exist on the online marketplace. In fact, many online marketplaces seem to be taking the opposite approach, abdicating any responsibility because they are thriving off the sale of fake goods. A recent survey found that 26% of American consumers have been conned into purchasing at least one counterfeit product in the past year. Too many consumers don't realize they purchase counterfeits until it's too late, and this can result in tragic consequences. Hoverboards with counterfeit batteries have caught on fire while charging, burning down someone's house. Fake beauty products have reportedly caused people's eyelashes to fall out in clumps, and counterfeit products can result in chronic health effects that do not present until years later, like water filter cartridges that not only don't remove contaminants, but actually add new carcinogens to water. Investigations by various media outlets have uncovered a huge number of knockoff children products that pose serious safety risks. There have been troubling reports of car seats that don't meet the National Highway Traffic Administration's crash test standards. Bicycle helmets, I see Mr. Love brought some, but I don't mean that yours are bad, but bicycle helmets that don't meet the Consumer Product Safety Commission's performance standards, and recalled products and knockoffs of recalled products that federal regulators know can or already have caused serious death or injury. And these knockoff products proliferate on online marketplaces. And consumers and authentic brands cannot fight the combination of lax policies of online platforms and deceptive practices of unscrupulous sellers trying to edge out legitimate businesses. Fake and incentivized reviews drown out authentic reviews or are used to take down legitimate rivals. On many marketplaces, misleading user interfaces obscure the identity of the actual seller for each purchase. And a person may think they're buying from Amazon when they're instead buying from a foreign third party who merely ships through Amazon. And a platform's decision to commingle inventory from different sellers makes it virtually impossible for anyone to reliably track whether they received a counterfeit or authentic product. Counterfeiters also have become much more sophisticated, producing products that appear authentic and setting prices more on par with authentic goods to better trick consumers. And savvy consumers who turn to the online store of a trusted brick and mortar business in search of authentic goods are increasingly finding a marketplace of third party sellers instead of a place to directly purchase their trusted brands. Many large traditional retailers, Walmart, Target, Macy's, Crate and Barrel have launched third party marketplaces to keep pace with Amazon and bolster lagging sales. So it's these hybrid marketplaces in which a site acts as both a seller and a platform for third party sellers that I think are most confusing. While some of these platforms screen and curate their sellers, others do less vetting and can give those sellers an order of credibility, often undeserved. So this week is National Consumer Protection Week. I think we can help bring attention to issues that are causing um, consumer problems. Uh, this week is a perfect time to get answers from our panel on the scope of the problem and solutions we can implement to protect consumers. And again, I think this is a very important uh, hearing. Thank you, Madam. Thank you.
Madam Chair.